This is the first proper episode of my new series called The Self-Learning Diary. If you want a full picture of what this is all about, you can check the first video which I will link down below. So the first month as a self-learner has been slow to say the least. So between presenting my master's dissertation, starting a new job and finally getting started on planning and meeting vendors for my wedding, a lot has been on my plate and I rarely found the time to engage in intensive study sessions. Although I'm lucky to work only 35 to 40 hours a week, adding to that, a more creative side hustle like YouTube really takes a toll on my levels of energy at the end of the day. However, I did create some rules that, despite not making much sense in their usefulness, are good enough for me because they are easy to remember and they allow me to structure my day a little bit better in order to incorporate some small language learning sessions during the week. So basically, I've created two systems. So first of all, I've been interchanging language learning according to the time of day. I've been studying Japanese in the morning, Latin during lunch breaks at my workplace, and German in the evenings. The way I decided to allocate languages according to time was not random though. I actually prefer to study Japanese in the morning because it's the most intense for me in terms of memorizing the characters and then being able to remember what they translate to, as well as grammar and sentence structure rules. And then Latin is the easiest for me because it's similar to Portuguese in many ways and I've been learning it through reading exercises that focus on contextual reading. The book for Latin is small and the simple language makes it a good companion for lunch breaks. I keep all of my Latin materials in my office so there's a full allocation of those materials to one place only and I will never fall into the temptation of switching languages while I'm home just because Latin is easier. Finally, German is more intermediate in terms of difficulty, so I prefer to leave that learning session for when I have more time in the evening, which despite not providing that full fresh feeling that I have in the morning, still allows me to do a short session of productive work. My second rule is to use any of my selected learning tools to study and avoid forcing myself to use only traditional means. This basically means that, for instance, when I'm tired in the evenings, I like to refresh my memory by doing a lot of Duolingo levels in German, reading short stories or revising past materials. And then if I'm feeling more energized, I can try and learn new chapters in my main textbook and explore more formal grammar rules. Well, now you may ask, what about consistency? Well, consistency has been hard to achieve. There are days when it is impossible to study or dedicate more than 15 minutes to language learning. Other days, I feel like I'd rather do something more entertaining and less focused activities to distract myself from the rest of my work. However, as much as daily consistency has been hard to achieve, I feel that pursuing weekly consistency has been much more important for me. Basically, it has been allowing me to manage my time more effectively according to my workload. To make sure I'm succeeding that whole weekly consistency thing, I'm trying to schedule mini goals for the week. Usually on Sundays, I tell myself what I want to accomplish in terms of language learning until next Sunday. This can be either getting to a certain point in the textbook, being able to talk about a specific subject or say a specific set of sentences, or reach a certain level in Duolingo or other apps. The fact that I establish weekly goals makes me feel like I'm challenging myself instead of getting to a boring learning routine, and it also lets me organize my tasks as I get through the week instead of forcing myself to study just because it should be part of a specific routine. It has definitely been working a whole lot better for me. By the way, I've been using Goodreads 5 a lot for this whole language learning process. I like to organize my notebooks by language, and every time I find something interesting related to the languages I'm learning, I just throw all of the information in there, as well as images I can find, and then organize everything according to what I think will be useful down the road. Here's a sneak peek of some of my Japanese notes. It's not much, but I feel that being able to keep on learning while working is such a big thing that every bit of progress is great. I've been trying as much as possible to also cut back on paper consumption, so I've decided to use mostly my iPad for note-taking, annotations, summaries and practice sheets, as well as materials related to language learning. While I prefer the feel of pen and paper, I think that having the opportunity of owning a tool like an iPad that mimics as much as possible that exact experience without all of the waste associated with handwriting is more than enough for me to feel the incentive to switch those habits. 
Having everything stored online means I have to manage multiple accounts of apps, cloud services and other websites that have sensitive personal information. And if you're like me and worry a lot about how you can be protected from people using and accessing your personal data, then you can rely on today's sponsor Dashlane to help you feel safer. Dashlane is the only tool you need to stay safe online. It's got you covered. It protects you from people monitoring your history, hacking your data and accounts, or stealing your passwords. Basically, Dashlane compiles three or four different privacy tools in a cheaper package. And as soon as you download it, you won't have to worry about online security issues ever again. Dashlane will tell you how many times you've reused the password, inform you about whether your data is compromised by hackers, and do a scan so you're sure your info is not being used. Dashlane has a basic free version, but Dashlane Premium has all of the above features and is cheaper than most VPNs or standalone security services. The value you get is not just in the features, but in the peace of mind knowing that Dashlane is actively protecting you from every angle. If you want to try it out, I've got your promo code that gets 10% off Dashlane Premium for anyone who clicks that link. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Bye guys!